Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Brackenhide Hollow Mythic Plus Dungeon Guide 4 Season 4 in Dragonflight. Footage is from the PTR. At the start of the dungeon, you're going to encounter a whole bunch of different mobs, starting with the Bone Bolt Hunters, which are going to throw traps at the ground, just avoid these, and leave a nasty bleed on players with their Bone Bolts. The DK speakers are going to cast DK surges at players, just interrupt as many of this as you can and once they summon a totem make sure you spare an interrupt for their withering burst. This one is quite nasty as it not only leaves a debuff on you that does damage but it also reduces your stats. At the same time the mystics are gonna keep shooting earthen bolts at you and those hurt particularly bad on fortified weeks, so make sure to interrupt as many of these as you can as well. The claw fighters are going to fixate a player and try to melee him to death, so just slow them down and CC them in order to prevent that. The bone crushers are going to put a bleed on players and you have to heal them above 90% to remove it. Last but not least, the big war scourge mobs are going to cast rage storm. That's an enrage effect that you can suit, they start spinning violently around so make sure you're not in melee and after that they're going to cast a spell that is going to fear your whole team so always save an interrupt for that. Your goal in the first area is to open 5 Tuskar cages which you can only do outside of combat and once you do you're going to spawn the first boss. It's a trio of mobs that you have to fight and all of them have different abilities. Gash Toot is going to cast Gash Frenzy, he jumps around and leaves bleeds on several different players these bleeds can be removed once the players are healed above 90% health. He's also going to cast Marked for Butchery, he jumps on a player, fixates them and does a bunch of damage over 4 seconds. So be prepared with healing and defensives. At the same time Rita Hacklore is going to cast Bladestorm. She starts spinning around and chases player around the boss room so make sure you do not get into the circle. And when she's not doing that she has a cleave so if you're melee make sure to always stand behind her. Always save an interrupt for the greater healing of the trick totem mob and then keep interrupting its earth bolts the rest of the time. All three bosses have trademarks abilities that they cast at the same time. Trick totem summons a totem that hexes the healer and the DPS needs to burst it down as quickly as possible to free them so that they can dispel the blind on the tank that was casted by Gashtoot. The tank then needs to position themselves between themselves and the savage charge of Rita Haklo and her target which is a random player in your party and if you survive that overlap the rest of the fight continues as before. The next area has a whole bunch of mobs but probably the most dangerous one is the Rot Singer. It has an AoE cast that you need to interrupt and it's also going to summon a totem that's going to put that withering debuff on players that not only does damage but also reduces your stats. The debuff is a disease so if you don't have a disease dispel that's gonna make it a little bit harder. The smaller elder trees have a root that you need to interrupt and the big withered oak trees have a stomp which is a big circle on the ground that you need to dodge if you're in melee and a frontal that everybody else needs to dodge called necrotic breath. These mobs will also keep summoning small lashers make sure to run those on your tank so he can easily get aggro on them. After a whole bunch of pulls with these mobs you are at the next boss stream out. He has a frontal so obviously dodge that. And he's also going to cast decay spray which is green swirlies on the ground that transform into slimes. Ewe them down and also save an Ewe CC for them as they'll try to cast spells at random players. Oh at the same time and if somebody's unlucky they can get one shot at. The boss then casts Grasping Vines trying to pull everybody towards him into a big green circle. At the end he eats everybody inside that circle and there's always should be one player soaking in there unless you want the boss to enrage. Once they're eaten they take a bunch of damage, the boss has a shield that you have to burst through and then you go back to the first phase. Keep in mind that the player who has been consumed has a debuff that increases the damage from subsequent consumes. So after your tank gets a couple of debuffs, somebody else needs to run in in order for him to reset his stacks. And a good target for that is somebody with an immunity. After you kill the boss you fight a mini boss that has a frontal called Sting Breath. It does a bunch of damage and it disorients the players that are caught inside of it. In its current version it's actually dodgeable but you have to be very very quick. And also melee stay out of the circle once the boss starts to cast his whirlwind. 
after you kill it, you wanna skip almost every mob from it until the third boss as they're quite nasty and hard to deal with. I have a separate video on how to do that and the bear and the two birds you can actually pull on top of the boss as long as you keep interrupting the bird's screech. As for the boss called Gutshot, he's going to summon traps on the ground, these green swirlies. Make sure you don't walk on top of them as you're gonna take damage and get stunned. And every time at 100% energy, he's going to call two hyenas that are going to join the fight. They're either going to try and jump on top of players, indicated by a brown swirly that you need to dodge, or the boss is going to mark a player and the hyenas are going to fixate them and start chasing them. You actually want to kite the hyenas into the green trap so they get stunned and trapped and slowly cleave them down as long as they're not fixating you while you keep interrupting the boss's master co which makes the hyenas immune to the traps. The next area has a bunch of field colors which are going to keep casting DK search at players, interrupt as many of these as you can and save a stun or a knockup for their rotting surge which casts those green swirlies around the room. At the same time, the Rot Hexers are going to put that disease on you, the big green circle that stacks, does damage to you, reduces the damage that you do and it spreads to players nearby which are standing inside of that circle. Another very nasty piece of business to deal with if you don't have a disease dispel in your party. The area is also full of small mobs that you can just cleave down along with everything else. And after several pulls with different combinations of these mobs and some of the ones that we have already seen in previous parts of the dungeon, you should be at the last boss. The fight starts with a frontal casted on the tank that summons a choking cloud. Make sure to dodge the frontal and then stay away from the cloud which is going to start going in circles around the room as going in gives you a debuff called Withering Rot. It's a dot that stacks and also reduces the damage that you do. The boss will then summon a totem and the totem is always summoned at the opposite end of the room of where the boss is positioned. So keep that in mind and make sure you don't summon the totem inside of the cloud because you have 7 seconds to kill it as it's gonna be casting rotting burst. If that cast goes off then everybody in your party gets a stack of the withering rot debuff that I mentioned earlier and you definitely want to prevent that from happening. The reason for that is the decaying strength that the boss casts at 100% energy. It does explosions at the player's location so make sure you spread out and it consumes all the withering wrong debuffs but it also buffs the boss for each stack that was available. It also removes the cloud from the arena but shortly after she casts another frontal and summons another cloud, the fight then continues as before. The one thing that I didn't mention so far is that she has a tank buster called DK Strike, it does a bunch of damage to the tank and puts a healing absorb shield on them that you have to heal through. So basically you need to keep killing down the totems as quickly as possible, survive the decaying strength casts and keep going until the boss reaches 5% which is when the fight ends. If you succeed you have completed Brackenhide Hollow and if you want to find out all the rest of the Mythic Plus dungeon guides for season 4 check out my YouTube channel as they're available there. See you guys in the next video, now get out of here.